Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And on today's episode of Skin School, we're gonna talk about a very fundamental and very important and somewhat controversial topic. And that is what is the role of food and diet when it comes to great skin? Who's got it right? Do the vegans have it right? Do the carnivores have it right? Do the Mediterraneans have it right? We're gonna really get into this and really understand and put you in a position where whether or not you register with any of these particular diet clubs, you will know really specifically what you need to support your skin during the entire anti-aging process, which is ultimately what we all want, right? And we're doing all these other things for our skin, let's understand what the role of diet is. And it's actually a very, very big role. We're all exposed to all the different trends that come and go, right? We've originally had Atkins diet, the Mediterranean diet, the keto diet, the paleo diet, you know, vegan, vegetarian, vegan with a twist where you can have some eggs, vegan that you can't have anything, paleo that you can have some, some fruits and vegetables here and some that you can't. So there's a lot of, lot of interesting, almost diehard perspectives about this. But the thing is, most of these relate to fat loss, weight loss, heart health, you know, cancer prevention, different things like that. That's a lot of the, the focus. Very rarely do you hear about these diets in the context of skin, right? Or anti-aging in general. I think everything that we're about to say today, by the way, I think it's gonna have a lot of value in terms of general health as well, because you have to remember that the skin is literally an organ. It's a viable, constantly changing, dynamic organ, just like our livers are, just like our hearts are, just like our brain is. So at the end of the day, many of its needs are the same needs as other organs in our body. So let's not forget that important aspect. It's not just a shell that covers our, our muscles and our bones and it keeps our organs intact. It is actually doing something and it's doing something on a regular basis. And with age, what it's doing is it's actually diminishing its productivity and its responses to many of the things that it did once when it was younger. And I'm gonna explain that in a moment. So let's look at skin and what happens to it during the aging process. And then we'll start to look at what we do from an anti-aging point of view re with regards to you know, our treatments and our topicals and all these other things. And then we're gonna find out where diet fits into all this. All right, so let's, let's break it down. So as we age, one of the constants in life is that the key protein in the skin's dermis, the dermis, as you know, is the actual structure of the skin. And what makes up the dermis, the thickness of it, the structure of it, is a bunch of collagen fibrils that are laying flat, built on each other. And when we're young, that collagen density is thick, the skin is thick and supple. There's elasticity in there because the protein's called elastin. There's a lot going on from a structural perspective. And then what ends up happening is that as we age, and believe it or not, this starts in our 20s, that the collagen production at the cellular level, and remember the cells that make collagen are fibroblasts, they start getting into a position where they start decreasing the production of collagen with age. So as you can see in this curve, you go from high levels of collagen production to slowly diminishing with age, right? So that's the underlying reason why the skin gets thin and it gets wrinkled and it gets crepey and it starts to look old. Right now, there's other things that are happening to the skin at the same time. We increase pigmentation, we get dryness, we get all these other, you know, sort of things that, you know, the upper epidermis starts to get more dullness because of its layers of dead cells that kind of build up upon that. There's other aspects that are happening, but the foundational structural change of skin comes down to the consistent loss of collagen with age, right? And that's so important to keep in mind because that is the forefront of everything that we do from an anti-aging point of view, if we're, if we're smart about it, and this is what all the skin school is about, is to teach you how to be smart about anti-aging programs and processes for your skin. So the foundational work we need to wor worry about is building collagen when our body actually wants to diminish it. It's the same thing with our muscles, right? I mean, as, as time goes on, if we're not hitting the gym and doing resistance training, et cetera, we start to see atrophy in our muscles with age, same thing happens with our skin. Atrophy of the skin's thickness because of collagen loss. Now, 
Having said that, now we know that, we've positioned that into the problem. That's the whole problem. So what do we do? If we want to do an anti-aging approach, and that's quite honestly what got me into building the trifecta as a program for anti-aging from a skincare perspective, the whole concept is we need to put on a certain amount of topical active ingredients, things like retinol, vitamin C, growth factors, there's certain proteins that are they're added to the mix, peptides, etc. that all of these are working to fundamentally stimulate collagen at the cellular level. And remember, we're talking about as time goes by, you consistently lose more and more collagen because your fibroblasts become more and more lazy and they effectively care less about making collagen. And that really, really goes into hardcore effect starting in perimenopause and menopause when estrogen levels drop and other hormone changes. We see really massive changes in the skin. So my whole perspective and my whole mission in terms of my educational dialogue here is that we need to stimulate collagen forever over time. So that's really why I developed the trifecta to make that process really easy to do, right? You've heard me talk about this before in other videos. So at the core of it, we need to stay consistent with the use of topicals that are going to stimulate collagen. All right, wonderful. That's all working. These retinols are going down. The vitamin C is going down. Growth factors are going down. They're going into the fibroblasts. They're triggering and turning on the process of, of cellular transcription and translation, all the things that make proteins, and boom, you start building collagen again. Wonderful. You're, yeah, that's a great thing. On the other hand, what's the value of microneedling? What's the value of lasers? What's the value of chemical peels? The whole point, and I've talked about this many times, the whole point is you're creating very, very controlled trauma, injury, and injury creates a cascade that's related to the signals that go down through the dermis, and then once again, tell your fibroblasts that, hey, we've got an injury up on the very surface of our skin, we need to heal this, and healing it means more collagen production, because collagen is the foundation of scar, and building collagen turns all those processes on, and again, we're going against the current. The current is decreasing, we're using topicals, we're using treatments, and we're trying to push the current this way to actually end up building more collagen than we're losing, right? Net gain of collagen production. That's how we win the game of skin anti-aging, right? That's the whole story right there. Right there is what you really, really need to focus on, and that game does not stop. There's no temporary solution to it. That's like your daily diet and exercise, you need to do it forever to keep your body in shape. Well, guess what? That's where these topicals and, and treatments come into play. That's the context. Now, this is where it gets interesting. You think about it, and you're like, okay, well, I'm stimulating collagen production, but really, what does it take to actually make collagen? Like, what is actually happening at the cellular level? What's happening is collagen is a protein, and it's a very, very consistent part of our body. I mean, it's literally all over our body. I mean, it's in our joints, it's in our muscles, it's in our tissues, it's in our fascia, it's in our skin. It's, it literally is all over our body. And so the process of collagen production is inherent in the health of our joints, in the health of our tissues, in the health of our skin, in the health of our nails, in the health of our hair. It's all part of the story of synthesis, right? So what is actually happening is very important to know, and how can we support it? Well, this is where it gets super interesting for me because I was a biochemistry and cell biology major at UCSD, and I remember learning about all of this, and same thing in medical school, we learned about all this, like how is collagen made, what are the biochemical pathways, and all that kind of stuff. This is all very interesting stuff. There's some extremely important and, and basic things that the cell needs, and those are building blocks right? Those are building blocks. Just like if you were to build a building, you know, you're build a home, you have a blueprint, you have, you know, architect, you have the construction workers that are actually building, but you also need wood, you need blocks, you need cement, you need actual material. Well, where is that material coming from? The material is coming from your diet. What a collagen strand is composed of is amino acids, other uh, vitamins and minerals, which I'm gonna talk about in a second. All of that stuff comes from your diet. Now, this is, this is where it gets interesting. Certain diets are great in terms of providing certain building block components, and other diets are good at bringing the other, but what you need 
At the end of it is a diet that brings it all to your skin and brings it all to your tissues. And I think what you're gonna learn right now is gonna put all this diet into perspective and at the end of the day, help you not only do what's right for your skin, but I think actually do what's right for your entire body from a functional point of view. And I'm not talking about just putting yourself in ketosis so that you know instead of burning carbs, you're burning fat and you're losing some of that body fat and you're losing that weight. I'm not talking about that, I'm talking about what are your joints and your ligaments and your and your muscles and your skin and all that other stuff, your hair, everything else need to be healthy. All right, so let's look at this for a second. So collagen production requires very specific amino acids. Specifically, it needs proline, it needs glycine, and it needs lysine. So proline, lysine, and glycine. These are the amino acids that your cells need in order to produce collagen. So where do those amino acids come from? Well, amino acids come from the proteins that we ingest. Some foods have them all. Some foods have some of them, but not all of them. Generally speaking, a complete source of protein is only derived from animal-based proteins. So you eat an egg, you've got all the amino acids you need. You know, meat, chicken, mostly fish, all of this has all of the essential amino acids that your body needs for all this, including the ones that I just mentioned. Guess what? Well, in plants, they don't have them all. So what you have to do, if you're gonna be a plant-based you gotta figure out which ones you're getting, which ones you're not getting, and then mix and match the different protein sources so that you are getting the entire complete composition. Interesting to note that collagen powder, which I did a whole video on also describing this whole concept, is really interesting and very inter important to understand. The collagen powder, you know, the good ones, the ones that have actually been used to show that there's been some changes to the skin, et cetera, those are all animal-based bovine-based, generally speaking. The marine-based ones have, have been shown to be less effective in that type of a way. And then it comes down to the fact that the broad range of amino acids that you need, generally speaking, come from animal sources. Now, if you're a vegan, don't let that bother you. Don't let that be like, oh my God, what's this guy saying? No, listen, if you're, if you're a vegan and you're looking out for, for getting a complete, you know, look at brown rice, look at pea, mix them together, but don't just get all of it from brown rice proteins or all of it from pea proteins because you're gonna be missing some of these things. And you gotta get it to the right concentrations as well because your body, it's not just, just your skin. As I mentioned, it's happening all over your body. Your body's constantly repairing itself, constantly trying to fix and mend these broken fences that are happening throughout our bodies. And much of that is collagen synthesis as well as other types of tissue repair mechanisms. But bottom line is amino acids are key and proteins that are high in amino acid concentration are necessary, actually both when we're growing, but also when we're old and we're trying to fix all these things. So I have personally become much more aware of the protein needs of our bodies and increased the amount of protein that goes into my diet. Now, let's uh, back away for a second. So we said you need these essential amino acids. You get them mostly from, from animal base, but you can also mix and match um, plant-based to complete the, the spectrum or the picture, but that's not it. At the enzymatic level, when the, you know, I mean, biology is just an incredible thing, but at the enzymatic level, when these are all, you know, these collagen fibrils are being put together, vitamin C, zinc, and copper are necessary cofactors during the process of collagen production. So if you think about it for a second, you're like, wait a minute, you know, all these diets that are, you know, heavy, heavy, like the carnivore or maybe the paleo to some extent. I mean, all these have like flexible rules, but at the end of the day, if you're going heavy onto a meat-based type of a diet and you're trying to get rid of carbs altogether and, and with carbs, a lot of that comes fruits and all that type of thing because sugars and everything else is considered an issue. If you're getting rid of all of that, where are you gonna get the other components to your diet? Where are you gonna get the vitamin C? Where are you gonna get the zinc and the copper and all this other stuff? Usually these, these come from you know, fruits and vegetables. So you're gonna make collagen, your diet needs to have the essential amino acids and it also needs to have vitamin C, zinc, and copper. Now in your tub of collagen powder, I mean, I, I was surprised. I looked back there and I'm like, oh, there's none of those things in there. So I better get it in a different way in my diet because it's not in my collagen powder. Okay, so no big deal. Now I know, so I you know, round out my diet there. But this is where it also gets interesting. When it comes specifically to skin, and again, we're talking about 
skin is just an organ and everything else translates. Your body needs antioxidants, right? I mean, there's constant oxidative stress that's happening at the tissue level, at the vascular level, all this kind of stuff. So you need antioxidants in your diet. We know that. So where do you get antioxidants? I mean, you get them from like berries, you get them from certain fruits. You know, that's where antioxidants come from. We also need omega fatty acids. We need it for our brains, we need it for our tissues, we need it for our skin. Where do we get that? Usually we get it from fish, there's certain nuts. Well, I think avocados is as well. The healthy fatty acids are very important as part of the necessary matrix of good skin, but also good health all around. What we also know, there's certain things that are just simply no-goes, right? Highly processed foods, no good. Foods that are rich in sugar, no good, right? For our health and for our skin. If you're acne prone, there's been some science and some studies that show cutting out dairy from your diet can really help with cystic acne. So that's very specific though. Generally speaking, when you think about what is you know, like a vegan, what is a carnivore, what is a vegetarian, and I've had friends who are you know, in all these categories, but this is where I think it gets really alarming. Sometimes you talk to somebody who's a vegan and they're eating basically like pasta with like, you know, red sauce basically out of a, out of a jar and they're eating French fries and they're eating, you know, bread or whatever, plant-based protein bars, et cetera. And that becomes their diet. Now, the problem with that is, again, you could be vegan, you think you're doing all the right things for your body and the environment, et cetera, but at the end of the day, you owe it to yourself to make sure that all the nutrients you need from a health point of view you're getting, and not all vegans are plant-based, whole food type vegans. So when that's not the case, then you're missing out on a lot of good nutrients and you're not doing your, your body any favors in the long run, you're eating lots of candy or other things like that. And the same thing goes for, for the meat-based type diets. What are you doing in a meat-based diet when all you're eating meats but you're not getting any of those other important antioxidants and all the other important vitamins and essential minerals and all the other things that come along with it? You know, so at the end of the day, you can be a vegan, but be mindful about getting everything you possibly need in your diet. And you can be animal-based, protein-based type of a diet, but you gotta make sure that you're getting the other things. Now, whether you're getting these things through supplements, you know, taking extra vitamins, or, um, or you, you know, just add them to your diet, at the end of the day, think about it this way. Your skin, your organs have needs. Those building blocks come from food. The food that you eat is gonna give the fuel and it's gonna give the components that your body requires to do all the healthy things that it needs from a reparative point. I mean, the body's an amazing thing. So just be you know, very, very aware of this as you go forward. Now let's summarize real quick. Let's kind of break it down real, real quickly here. I am not picking sides between vegans and carnivores or you know, any of these dietary fats. I'm simply speaking broadly about your skin needs. Now, let's break down if we're really gonna get after and make our skin the best it can be, what things should we be doing? So, number one, first and foremost, starts with sun protection, right? Non-starter, your, your sun UV, UVA is breaking down collagen at a rate much faster than you can build it, period. So, you know, if you wanna kind of accelerate the aging process, your skin's gonna, be you know, exposed to sun, that's how it's gonna happen. So sun protection is really important. I advise mineral-based sun, sunscreen, something that has zinc or titanium in it, low chemical contents, just mostly barrier protection. Wear a hat, if you're really hardcore like my wife is, wear those coolie bar face masks when you're taking long walks or out on a boat or doing something that's high, high sun exposure. Once you have that point established, number two comes down to topical agents. Because remember, you're doing this for the long run, so you need to be on things like retinol, vitamin C, growth factors, et cetera. I happen to bring them all together in addition to all the other you know, aging-related changes that affect pigment and moisture and oil balance and pores and all that stuff. Put it all together in trifecta. You can certainly look what's in the trifecta and then decouple it and go find the other components, but that's what you need. You need to constantly stimulate your, your fibroblasts to build collagen. That's how you're gonna turn the tide against collagen loss, right? So collagen, stimulators are a key part of active ingredients. If you're not using them, you're missing out on a lot. I mean, to me, that's not even skin care if you're not doing those other things. Now, 
Where does office-based treatments fit in? Well, they fit in as additional you know, boosters, basically. I always think of them as like the boot camps, right? So you've you got a good diet exercise, you've got sun protection and topicals. Then you're putting you know, yourself through like a, a microneedling, a laser, light chemical peel, et cetera. That's stimulating more collagen. How often you do it depends partly on your budget, your downtime, et cetera. But generally speaking, if you're gonna do it, don't do it just once a year. There's no point to it. Do it regularly. Every six weeks, three months, whatever it is, add that into your, your regimen. Now, to support all this synthesis and stimulation that we just did here, you need the diet. The diet needs to have full ranges of amino acids, you know, high concentrations actually, because your whole body is doing this all at once. And if it's gonna spare some to your skin during its, its process, as opposed to, you know, your vessels or this and that, you need enough to go around. So make sure you're getting enough protein. And I, I'm not gonna speak about exactly what it, that number is. I think you gotta do a little bit more research on, on that aspect. But I think supplements and things like that are good, but make sure you're getting it in your diet. If you happen to be vegan, remember, you gotta get your sources from different areas. So make sure you're getting a complete full range of amino acids, specifically proline, glycine, and uh, lysine. So get your amino acids, make sure you got all the vitamins you need, vitamin A, B, C, all of these have specific roles in, in tissue uh, preparation and production. You wanna make sure that all your vi B vitamins are there, you wanna make sure vitamin C you're taking orally for collagen production, antioxidants. You wanna make sure that you're doing things dietary-wise that are decreasing oxidative load, so you know, berries and avocados and all that kind of stuff are useful and very, very helpful. Omega acids are very important as well, all around good health. So put all of that together and you put yourself into a very good position to win the game over skin aging. I hope this helps, guys. I hope there's uh, some clarity on the subject and brought some awareness onto the topic of food and skin and kind of explained it in, in that context from a biochemical point of view. Definitely share this along with some friends and family. I want this word to get out as far and wide as possible. It's good information for everyone. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe, follow along with me. There's gonna be a lot of good information both in skin school and as we talk about facial rejuvenation topics and uh, non-surgical treatments. You know, if you liked it, hit like and stay tuned with me for next time. All right, everyone, thanks so much, Dr. Amir Karam.